Why is creatine such a popular dietary supplement as of late? Well, it turns out that creatine is really important for helping to supply cellular energy to energy demanding tissues, such as exercise, skeletal muscle, when you're doing weightlifting, CrossFit, Olympic lifting, sprinting, hiking, anything along those lines where you're putting high energetic demands on your exercised or working skeletal muscle, the phosphocreatine system is helping to supply high energy phosphates to rephosphorylate ADP back into ATP, which is the catalyst to make muscle contractions actually work. And creatine is also very important for the brain. But I want to share with you some highlights from a book that I've been reading from titled Creatine and Creatine Kinase in Health and Disease. This book was really not for the lay person, but there was a lot of peer-reviewed academic articles that were cited within here, uh, especially about how creatine impacts the brain, neurotransmitter biosynthesis, and possibly mitochondrial function within the brain. And associated creatine deficiencies are linked with all sorts of developmental cognitive issues, mood issues, memory issues, and beyond. So I think this is really important for us to understand. So creatine deficiency causes a disruption in cellular energy homeostasis. So what I'm going to do is I, I literally just read pages and pages of documents and started to put things into a spreadsheet here so that I can just convey this to you and help you better understand. Because what most people think about when they hear the word creatine is they think it's going to bloat you up. Because we know that creatine helps pull water into cells, which is how it can help support healthy hydration. And this is why creatine should, in my opinion, and Myoscience is one of the only companies who actually innovate in this way is pairing electrolytes with high doses of creatine, two and a half grams. You know that that's more of a maintenance dose between two and five grams per day is a maintenance dose of creatine. There are short-term four to seven day loading phases of 10 to 20 grams of creatine per day, but maintenance doses of creatine range between two and five grams per day, depending upon whether you're a vegan, vegetarian, or omnivore. If you eat an omnivore style diet, two grams a day is just fine. If you're a vegan, you may need closer to five, but Creatine helps pull water into your muscle tissue so it can cause some bloating. But how creatine helps with muscular strength, muscular endurance, muscular power, and possibly weight gain is by helping you have more cellular energy during your exercise sessions. So as the article quotes, creatine is essential for the, to maintain cellular energy or ATP in tissues with high energy demand like the brain and the muscle. So creatine is not inherently anabolic. It's not like anabolic steroids or SARMs or peptides. It helps with cellular energy production by maintaining the phosphocreatine system. So that's the important thing to consider. Now creatine is made endogenously by the kidneys, the liver, and the testes from arginine, methionine, and glycine. Predominantly, as they say, in the liver as well as the kidneys, pancreas, and the testes. They also want to say that creatine is derived exogenously through the diet, mainly from omnivorous style foods, from meat, shellfish, seafood, and beyond. And you need a minimum of two grams per day through the diet, because if you're not getting that, it's hard for the amino acids, like we talked about the arginine, methionine, and glycine to, you know, the liver to package those amino acids up and to make creatine. So if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you are not getting any creatine from your diet. That's the big take home that I want to share from this video, in addition to other aspects of this that we should remember. So if you've been a vegan or vegetarian for any length of time, you need to do a loading dose of creatine four to seven days between 10 and 20 grams per day to get your creatine levels up. And women also would benefit from a loading dose, followed by a maintenance dose of two to five grams per day, indefinitely for most people. Now, what I think is really interesting is how creatine is protective for the brain. Creatine has a protective effect on neuronal survival. This has been shown in neuronal tissue cultures exposed to high levels of glutamine. So we hear all about how we should avoid glutamine and MSG in, in takeout. Well, it turns out that glutamate toxicity is very problematic and creatine helps protect the neurons there. The mechanism by which this may happen is by affecting and reducing neuroexcitotoxicity and cell death has been extensively studied, including the effects of mitochondrial permeability, transition proteins, and beyond. So it turns out that creatine may impact the mitochondria, which I think is really important because, you know, we have so many supplements. People talk about urethrin A and NAD and NMN and NR. 
But here we have this relatively affordable supplement known as creatine that for like 25 bucks a month, you can get or, or less, you can get loads of creatine. And then if you're having an omnivorous style diet, you're getting plenty of creatine. So you don't need to be spending all this, all this money on urethrin and all these expensive supplements. Okay. The people that would also benefit from creatine supplementation are those with methylation disorders, such as 5-MTHF are polymorphisms because it turns out that creatine synthesis from the arginine, methionine, and glycine uh, is dependent upon a lot of methylation reactions. So it requires a lot of methyl groups to be synthesized. So this is where exogenous creatine may indirectly help with uh, methylation and support methylation. Creatine has been shown to have anxiolytic properties, meaning that if people are anxious and like unsettling, like say personality disorders, people on the spectrum of borderline personality or even narcissistic personality disorders, covert narcissism. We see so many videos on this with regards to relationships, you know, anxiety, mental health issues are on the rise. Creatine has anxiolytic effects, meaning it helps calm the brain by possibly reducing this glutamate neuroexcitotoxicity, which I think is important, but it also appears to be an agonist for GABA receptors within the brains. Now, how do you get creatine from your bloodstream or your diet into your tissues like your brain or your muscles? That is dependent upon the creatine transporter known as the CRT. CRT is a creatine transporter. It turns out that electrolytes like sodium, potassium, magnesium, and chloride, as well as calcium, all help with this creatine transport protein. So this is important to keep in mind. And, and this is why I generally recommend to people either eat creatine with a meal or supplement it with electrolytes. So this is really important. Now, what's interesting here is when we have inborn creatine transport protein deficiency disorders, that is linked with cognitive decline and developmental issues, such as mental retardation, speech delay, language delay, and autistic-like behaviors, as well as epilepsy. So I know that many of you are taking creatine for enhancing sports performance, trying to optimize muscle mass and recovery and so forth. And But we have all this data showing that uh, inborn errors in the creatine transport protein and or creatine synthesis, including methylation defects, can lead to mental retardation, speech and language delay, as well as autistic-like behaviors and even epilepsy. So really important stuff. We talked about creatine before in other videos. I just want you to know that most creatine on the market is actually using material made in China. It's not the highest quality material out there. Uh, there's only one company in the world that is selling creatine that's made in Europe to the best of my knowledge, and that is Allscan Biotech, uh, the Cree Pure and Cree Vitalis material. And, that, and that's why in my own sense, we exclusively only use that material. Uh, so one is micronized, it's known as Crea Vitalis. So if, if you have a lot of GI issues, uh, sensitivities, uh, if you have tend to have like diarrhea or gastric distress when you take creatine, you may consider the Crea Vitalis micronized material, but the Crea Pure is, is very great uh, as well. Now, before we part ways, I know many of you are focusing creatine supplementation for impacting athletic performance and healthy hydration, but you also need to consider the brain because it turns out that creatine helps with the transfer of high energy phosphates and helps store these high energy phosphates to rephosphorylate ADP to make ATP, which is cellular energy, both in the, in the muscles and in the brain. And so this provides an additional energy buffer or resource during periods of peak energy demand, such as sprinting, Olympic lifting, CrossFit, bodybuilding, weightlifting, running, all of that. Uh, really important, but also remember your brain as well. And it turns out that creatine function within the brain it helps with mitochondrial function within the brain and possibly decreasing the formation of... Um, of glutamate toxicity and neurotoxicity, which I think is really important. So just wanted to share this with you. This ebook is awesome. I'll put a link in the description below and you can check it out and download this. Uh, tons of really good research here. And I was not aware that uh, inborn errors in creatine synthesis and transport protein, the creatine transporter were linked with uh, language and speech delay and various cognitive declines and even epilepsy. I mean, uh, this is really impressive. And I think this is why we see so many people excited about supplemental creatine. So I would love to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below, my friends, what have you noticed since you started taking creatine? I found 
through my clients and people that I work with, they'll say things like the light switch is turned on in my brain for the first time in years. They just notice a lot more. Um, anytime I have any sleep deprivation, like last night, for some reason I got up at like 3.30 in the morning and couldn't go back to sleep. So I'm taking 20 grams of creatine today to help make videos like this for you so that I know I was a little off today, but you know that I'm not as off as I might be had I not considered that. So um, there's research to show that creatine can help mitigate the cognitive decline associated with sleep deprivation, which we know women going through menopause have sleep issues. So, so this could be a peri and postmenopausal uh, thing to consider higher doses of creatine. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. My friends, we'll catch you on a future video down the road.